Friday Report. Dan Vallis here from InformedChristians.com, a ministry devoted to discerning current events from a Christian perspective. I want to give a quick shout out to all those who send in tips and links and things that you find. Your help and your watchfulness goes a great way toward helping others through this ministry as well. There are only so many hours in the day, and it helps when other watchmen and other people are alert and looking for things or see things that God perhaps brings to your attention and shares them with us, and we can all be watching together so we can all be vigilant, so we can all be sober for the sole purpose so that eventually we can all be ready so we could live in light of what's going on, the lateness of the hour, and have an understanding of the times. So again, I just appreciate your help. Now this is a watch, not a prediction. What we're sharing here is things that have already happened, things that are going on right now. I don't know what's coming down the pipe. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't even know what's going to happen in the next 15 minutes. So this is just a watch. Based on what we have seen, it has caught our attention that the enemy appears to be up to something. And they seem to be alerting their disciples to get ready for something too as well. So we are watching and keeping an eye on them because they're acting very suspicious. We've been tracking in our past few videos, especially the last one, we looked a lot at the Economist cover. Seems to be a program guide providing cues to Satan disciples of some of the major things that are going to be happening this year. Particularly, we've seen a lot of it unfold literally within the past two weeks, the past 14 days. So that's that's one reason why we're definitely paying attention because this definitely stands out. This is not normal. Someone knew months ago that all this stuff would happen in this narrow time frame. So that is very suspicious. Someone brought up a good question today. They were looking for how to find that cover on the Economist website and they were having trouble finding it. But it won't appear in their normal publications because it's an annual collection. But you can find it on their website. They have a World in 2015 app. But really they have a separate website for it, theworldin.com. And that's where they really delve into it there because it's, it's an annual collection. So if you're looking for it, that's where it will be. With all the symbols on this cover, though, we find several clues. We've seen different clues that alert to what time period to look in, what calendar to, to use, steps to take. But we also notice that there is a significant figure on the left, the Pied Piper. And that tells them of where to look for the information. The Pied Piper. Those who are schooled or understand the symbols and the secondary meanings and the tertiary meanings behind a lot of these, particularly the esoteric meanings, Satan's disciples, they already know the Pied Piper who already has a lot of that messaging and symbolism in it. And I hope you know where it is too. So the Pied Piper is on the cover as a clue and a tell-all of this is where you are going to look at to find the majority of all these happening. And the Pied Piper is the media and Hollywood. They are the one who set the stage that the world follows, that the common average sheeple person follows. And they believe that they're telling them truth and they're, they're the talking heads on the news and the figureheads that people follow and listen to and spend their time and energy soaking up. They're Pied Pipers. In the story of the Pied Piper, eventually, at the end of the story, he ends up using music and entertainment to draw away the town's children. And that's exactly what Hollywood and the media does today. It uses media, music, and entertainment to draw away, very particularly targeting your children. And they know that is their end goal. Their goal is to capture your children, the heart and mind of your children, and you too. So we must beware of the Pied Piper. There are two sets of watchmen in the world right now. There are the Christians, like us, who are watching the events, having an understanding of the times from a biblical perspective, looking at prophetic events, celestial events, then also seeing the state of the generation, the perilous times, how the Bible says man will be in the last generation. We've seen a lot of that coming together. So we've been looking from a Christian perspective at the world events and why this is late hour and we find ourselves at the end of the last generation. But we also have to keep in mind too that Satan's disciples are also watching too. And they know prophetic events and they know the Bible sometimes more, more in depth than most Christians. They're looking for a different end and a different expectation than we are, but we're both watching. So we need to be sober, we need to be vigilant, and we also have to keep in mind that the signals that the enemy is looking for, there will be be disinformation in there. And so we must always be careful and have courteous skepticism of everything. 
So with that, let's dive on in. Already we've seen so much happen just within the past two weeks. It's incredible. And it's been building and crescendoing with the message too. Now a couple of days ago, I think on the 6th or 8th, there was a TV Star Wars trailer that came out, or the international trailer, one of those. And it had a particular scene that someone pointed out today was very reminiscent of the scene from the movie Apocalypse Now. With the TIE fighters coming in the sunset, harking to the helicopters in Apocalypse Now, the shots were lined up very reminiscent of each other. So I thought that very interesting in context of all the other signals we've seen to Apocalypse, that in addition to everything else that was in those Star Wars trailers, there's also a not-so-subtle plug at Apocalypse Now, too, as well. Yesterday we covered a lot about ISIS, drones, bug splats, and we've already looked at how it seems a lot had been pointed to that. But it's interesting, I found out today, there's an activist in Raqqa that has been secretly filming scenes from inside the Syrian city that is under control of the Islamic State. They've been trying to bring to attention some of the atrocities and things that are happening there. But it's very interesting, the motif and logo that they have for their mission or whatever is a blood splat. I thought that very, very suspicious. Particularly interesting that they filmed life in Raqqa, the city of Raqqa. At, and you'll notice in the left-hand corner there, this clock tower, which is part of one of the city centers there. They filmed this around there. And then yesterday was the announcement made of a very important drone strike. A very notable bug splat, as the military jargon uses, which fits the symbolism. Supposedly they made a strike on Jihadi John, a very, who's been the face of ISIS. And the different newspapers and whatnot were showing where the drone strike was made in relation to the clock roundabout. In this time frame where we find ourselves at, there's a very notable bug splat, drone strike, strike on ISIS, right in context of a clock tower obelisk. And here's a better picture from the city earlier in the year. So many converging symbols just in this one event. This was an announcement, a very clear announcement. Then also yesterday was the announcement of a new movie coming out in winter 2016, Gods of Egypt. And what did we cover just yesterday? Some of the gods of Egypt, Osiris, the obelisk, we talked about that. The, the two pillars, we've talked about that too. They, how they are a stargate. It's a depiction of a portal. But they released the posters for it, and they show four of the main gods that are going to be featured in the movie, Gods of Egypt. And then also the, the human character, Beck. This is not a coincidence, folks. Just look at some of the symbolism on these posters. You know, all the, all the ancient gods, whether it's Greek, Roman, Egyptian, they all have their basis from the fallen angels who came down and portrayed, tried to pass themselves off as gods. That's where all those legends and mythologies come from. There is a kernel of truth to them. They released five posters today. Hathor was the one who protected those journeying to the next life and was a goddess of destruction in her role as the Eye of Ra. Uh, hello, does that sound familiar with a lot of the symbolism we've been covering? The Eye, Apollyon, goddess of destruction, god of destruction, Apollyon, the destroyer. Thoth, he was the scribe of the gods, and he was identified by the Greeks with their closest matching god, Hermes, and the Roman god, Mercury. And we talk a lot about him in some of our articles, Time in Tomorrowland, Time Cern in the Bible, Time in Back to the Future. We, we go a lot more in depth on, on those subjects. But then Set, in Egyptian mythology, Set is portrayed as the usurper who killed and mutilated his own brother, Osiris. That's who we talked about the other day. Or Osiris' wife, Isis, we've also been talking about, and it's still in the news, Isis. She's the one who reassembled Osiris' corpse and resurrected him long enough to conceive his son and heir, Horus. Of course, she was missing a body part. That was the part that was cut off. And that's what the obelisk represents. A horse was said to be the sky. He was considered also to contain the sun and the moon. A lot of symbolism here. Again, the time, this timing is not coincidental. The gods of Egypt, right in context of everything that's coming on. What other posters were released within a few days? The Alice in Wonderland posters. Wow, there's some interesting similarities between some of these. They're both holding balls of power. Hmm. In Alice in Wonderland, it's chromosphere relating to time, controlling time. On this poster with Horus, we find some very interesting graphics that remind me a lot of the symbolism and motifs that we've seen surrounding CERN and the particle colliders there. Particularly, we've seen a lot at Eurovision just a couple months ago with him doing almost the exact same thing. We've seen with CERN, their sponsored video, Symmetry, used that exact same sequence uh, for opening a portal. Very strong symbolism here. 
Now, who is producing this Gods of Egypt? A company called Lion's Gate. Lion's Gate. What should that remind us of? Well, in ancient Babylon, there was Ishtar's Gate, and it was flanked by lions on either side of it. Ishtar's Gate is Lion's Gate, and Ishtar's Gate was deemed as a, a portal doorway to the gods, too. Lion's Gate. That reminds us of another Lion's Gate. The one controlled by the Pied Piper Hollywood. The Kodak Theater is where Satan awards his disciples for their valiant efforts. All of them are Pied Pipers who have sold themselves out to carry off your children, their hearts and their minds, and yours as well. So it shouldn't surprise us then we find a lot of the same symbolism here at the heart of the serpent's headquarters. You just walk to the courtyard of the Kodak Theater and you see a stylized Ishtar Gate, the Lion's Gate, with fallen angels from Babylon on it, the Nephilim, clearly depicted on it. These things are huge! Look at the size of the people compared to that. And then they have these huge pillars with the exact same lions from Babylon. Lion's Gate. Hollywood is not your friend. And if you look down on the floor of the Kodak Theater, they have the serpent down there too. That's what Hollywood is. It's entirely the tool and altar of the serpent and his fallen angels. It has no place in the Christian home. When a movie starts that's produced by Lionsgate, they typically have a little animated indent right after that. They show a lot of clockwork and time-related motifs and then a keyhole. It's all about time, gates, portals, opening doors, Lionsgate. That's what it is all about. The Ishtar Gate, the Lion's Gate. That's why it's used in Back to the Future. Where did he live? In Lion Estates. And he went through the Lion's Gates. All this is not just coincidental, folks. And, of course, there's obelisks and, and pine cones and opening the, the pineal gland and all that died there, too. But Lion's Gate. Hollywood is entirely the Pied Piper used by Satan. So that was yesterday. Then today... Friday the 13th, the New York Stock Exchange opened with in structure and a guy dressed in a panda suit. This is not normal news. A guy in a panda suit. Right. And that instantly reminds us of the very prominent panda right on front of the cover. I think several of the symbols on the cover have multiple usage. There's, there's probably a primary message, a secondary message, and a tertiary message. And I wouldn't be surprised if they have a whole queue of how they're going to use these over the next few days because Satan doesn't know the day or hour that Christ is going to start his his major campaigns it looks like Satan's ramping up and getting his disciples ready for his campaign but we're probably going to see a little bit more use out of all these symbols again in this very tight time frame just yesterday we were talking about the cover and about the bloodhound rocket car and I said you know we hadn't seen anything so far but then someone sent in today well guess what happened today there's a major article in BBC about bringing that focus to the Bloodhound, which is the name of the supersonic car. So the same day we have a, a panda right in the news. We also have the Bloodhound rocket car. A couple days ago we had seen a related news article involving an oil change system that Castrol had invented, but we hadn't seen a strong one definitively about the Bloodhound and the supersonic car until today. So this was a very strong signal too. Again, in the same time frame that is signaled, we sh should be looking and expecting to see it. So much is happening. I, the gods of Egypt, Isis, Bugs Platt, Rocket Car, Panda... All that in just two days. And so much in the gods of Egypt. Man, that's that's thick. So if we look at the cover, we've, we've seen so much happening. Let's take a look at what happens if we cut out what has already happened. Now, there's not that many symbols left. They're open to conjecture right now. So there's a few that they might still pull out of their pocket, and there are some that they might reuse again, too. So we're going to continue to keep our eyes open and watch and be ready. And the Bible tells us this is the hour to wake up. It's time to wake up, to get busy for God, and to put on the armor of light. Do you know how to do that? Are you putting on the armor of light? Are you putting on the armor of God? Or are you taking it off? You know, when we sit down to sit at Satan's table and enjoy the, what the Pied Piper has to produce, we are taking off the armor of God because we are willingly subjecting ourselves to Satan to enjoy what he produces, his fruits. And when you do that, you will never produce the fruits of the Spirit in your life to the amount that God wants to. Do you want to grow in God? Do you want to put on the armor of light? Do you want to have the armor of God on so you can be victorious, strong, and bold to serve God? Well, we have to trim. 
That's what the parable of the virgins did. They had to trim their lamps. We have to cast off. There's things we have to get rid of in our life first before we can go forward more effectively. We have to set aside what so easily besets us, the stumbling blocks that hold us back. We have a race to run. I hope you run well. I hope you finish well. And that's why I'm producing these so you can know what should we be casting off? What should we be getting out of our life? What should we be focusing on? What should we be looking toward? We should be looking toward the smiling face of our Savior because we have purified our lives and gotten out of our life everything that He disapproves of so that when He can see us and see us striving to serve Him and live like Him and bear fruit in our life, that is when He can say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I hope that is what you are striving for. I pray God will give you wisdom and knowledge of what you should do. Maranatha.